Do you believe that when Zen 5 comes out later this year, that CPUs will be more price slash performance than Zen 4? So better price to performance. Uh, if so, do you think pricing will go back to the original uh, rise and roots of price to performance or be priced higher? I think <laughs> I know your answer on this one, Tim. Yeah, I mean, AMD is now the dominant player for desktop mm -hmm. CPUs. Mm -hmm. So there's little incentive for them to go back to the rise in roots, I guess, which the rise in roots were all about going from a CPU generation where they had no market share or interest whatsoever because their CPUs were so bad to creating interest in the CPU. So all the, all the decisions that they made about making them really cheap and offering supposedly, you know, ha the same performance as an Intel CPU for half the price, which was really only in some applications, not all you, of the time. Yeah, so to interrupt, but you copped a lot of heat on this topic, if you recall, and it was about, correct me if I'm wrong, was it the Zen 2 leaked launch specifications prior to Computex? That's right, because the leak, well, it wasn't really a leak, it was just BS. Well, there, <laughs> there was a leak about Ryzen 5 becoming cheaper than it currently was and offering yes. more cores and better performance, something along those lines, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Something vaguely along those lines, and you put out a news report calling BS on the whole thing, mm -hmm. saying it makes no logical sense. Uh, as they become more competitive, they're not going to offer you more. It goes the other way. As they become more That's competitive, right. you get less. Well, and in addition to having a couple of sources providing us some pretty good information about the conflicting information, let's say. Sure, the sources were, yeah, fairly reliable, <laughs> horse's mouth type stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you were right. And basically, you 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 laid out to I guess it was a lot of AMD fans telling them, look, guys, the reason why you got your Ryzen 5 1600 and your Ryzen 7 1700 so cheap relative to a Core i7 7700K is because they kind of sucked. Like, yes, they could do this quite well and they had some strengths here, but then when it came to the core thing you were buying it for, which was usually gaming, they were well down on performance. So yeah. it didn't mean you shouldn't buy them; they were complete garbage. The very cheap price, that's why it was justified. Yeah, that's right. And since then, AMD's market share has gone like this, and Intel's has gone, you know, straight nosedive, basically. And there's a significant crossover there in like the Zen 3 era where it just totally flipped on its head in terms of sales. So when AMD is in the dominant position, that even in more of a dominant position in CPUs, at least for desktop DIY sales, than NVIDIA are for GPUs. Mm -hmm. They are just smoking Intel. Mm -hmm. There is no incentive for them to give you better price-to-performance products with a future generation, not to the level of your Zen 1, your Zen Plus era where you know we saw heavy discounts, great prices at launch that was designed to increase their market share. They, they have increased their market share. There's nowhere else for them to go. So... Yeah, I'm not saying that they'll be more expensive. I think that they'll be looking at what sort of prices they could get away with. And like NVIDIA sees with the GPU side of things, AMD also has to compete with themselves. They need to convince people who are already on AM4 systems and have, you know, they've maybe bought a 5800X 3D, one of the most successful CPUs they've made. They have to convince those people that it is worth buying another CPU. So they can't make them so ludicrously expensive that no one is going to be buying any CPUs, even if they're in a dominant market position. But yeah, they're not going to be offering crazy discounts. If anything, you will see older generation parts, the Zen 4 stuff will be available at lower prices because, you know, best case scenario, they'll slot in new products that are faster at the same or similar prices. The old models will get a bit cheaper, which just happens, you know, even throughout the Zen 4 generation as it is with no new parts. Some of the models have gotten cheaper over time. So we'll see more of that, and hopefully that will give people good price-to-performance parts, good incentive to upgrade from AM4, new entry-level stuff, which is really what the AM5 platform needs because a good $150, $120 CPU would be amazing for that platform. But yeah, that's I highly doubt that that will be offered directly via Zen 5. In a sense, it's surprising, as you say, that they've discounted even flagship gaming parts like the 7800X 3D yeah, that's right. at all. Yep. But then if you think about it, again, they they wouldn't... Why are they doing that? They're not doing it to be nice guy AMD. Oh, you know, GPUs are so expensive. Let's give the guys a break and give them yep. some affordable uh, Zen 4 CPUs. Absolutely not the case. So why are they doing it? 
one reason could be that, yeah, they have a lot more Zen 4 than they would have liked to have had at this point in time. Uh, and with Zen 5 coming, they want to clear that out at a reasonable price rather than a fire sale price. Yep. And it, that situation could make sense because when Zen 4 did land, I'm sure AMD probably predicted more demand and more hype around them than they got. Like those things kind of landed like a lead brick. Like they just no one was interested. No in them, one really. Motherboards yeah. were too way too expensive. Memory was absurdly too expensive. So very few people cared about AM5 when it was first released. And that was probably true for a good six months. And you saw AMD try various things to make that platform and those CPUs more appealing. So they probably have, uh, they probably miscalculated how well that would sell for the, probably the first six months. So that might have something to do with it as well. Yeah, but I think another reason as well is that if they've, let's say you've got a 7800 XGD and you're selling it for, what was the MSRP? 400, 450? Yeah. If they've already sold that CPU to everyone that was interested in buying it at $450, then that CPU will have no further sales. So a typical marketing tactic that we see, especially from AMD, is they sell it at the highest price that they can to begin with. And then over time, they go, okay, everyone that was interested in at $450, we've saturated that. Let's bump it down to $400. Let's capture a new set of people interested in buying that CPU. Yeah. And they do that as the lifespan of that product goes along, including with their GPUs. So just it keeps them flowing yeah, out keep, the door keeps at a reasonable them moving. pace. Because there will still be people who obviously, you know, I know what you meant though, when you say they've sold it to all the people that would pay 450. They're, they've sold it to the bulk of the people who was interested. There, there'd still be more people that are interested, but it would slow the demand significantly. So yeah. rather than try and sell it to 450 for a handful of people, they're like, well, we'll sell it for 380 or whatever it is to many more people. And yes, they're, they're juggling that, right? They're yep. thinking, oh, if we can get you know, 20% more sales at a lower price will in total make more revenue or profit from that mm -hmm. from that CPU. So, you know, some companies can get away with not doing that. We see NVIDIA at times not do that with their GPUs because clearly they, they just get a certain amount of sales over the lifespan of that product that they're very satisfied with. And I think games as well maybe play into a little bit more. People upgrade at different times and so on with GPUs. But yeah, AMD has this philosophy and they've, they've done it for all their CPUs really where over time they get a bit cheaper. But yeah, like with Zen 5, they're going to be debuting at a price to performance ratio that is going to be around where the CPUs land in terms of performance. So if they're much more powerful, then potentially you will see them debut at higher prices. But hopefully there'll be enough value there when they come out that they're not, you know, like a 7900 XT GPU where they're kind of ridiculous to begin with and then drop in price shortly after. So mm -hmm. we'll see where they've learnt lessons there. But Zen 4, I still think, even, even if there wasn't huge demand at launch, it wasn't like it was an awfully priced product at launch. It was still reasonably powerful at times it had its benefits but it just wasn't anything amazing it was well, just it is what it, the, it was what it the, was the problem was the cp not so much the cpus themselves it was the motherboards and memory yeah both of which i think cost more than some of the cpus yeah so yeah. that's a bit of a a showstopper there yeah